Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, last week, I believe I posted a short video um, about the woman who had the issue of blood, and she went to Jesus. Um, and this is a very unique, very, very wonderful story, uh, especially about faith. And um, I believe it's in um, Mark 5 is where we, where we find this story. Um, the woman had an issue of blood. She'd had it for, what is it, 12 years, I believe it was. She'd been to all kinds of doctors uh, and specialists. Uh, she spent everything she had trying to, to get this this issue taken care of and healed, to be healed. I believe it was some sort of a hemorrhaging in which uh, she lost a lot of blood and she was bleeding constantly. Uh, but she got to, uh, to a point where she just said, you know, we got to do something about this. And of course, the Bible tells us that she was on her. She she crawled to Jesus. I mean, listen, this is this is back then was wasn't nothing like what we have today. Today, if we crawl on Jesus, you know, crawl uh, on the ground. Most likely, we're going to be on concrete, or we're going to be on grass, or we're going to be on um, dirt of some sort, or maybe some sort of asphalt. Um, we're going to be on something, even perhaps a wooden platform. But in those days. They didn't have all that. I mean, this woman got down on, on, you know, she's crawling, crawling on her, probably crawling on her belly, man, her hands and knees and belly, and she's, you know, got to fight all these nasty feet and legs that are, <laughs> that are in her way, and she's got to, you know, put up with all that. But she was determined to get up to Jesus, and um, as she was approaching Jesus, and when she began, you know, dealing with this, the Bible, the verse says uh, in Mark five twenty eight, <coughs> excuse me. For she thought, okay, so when you break that word down in Greek, when she thought, it means is what she said to herself. If I just touch his garment, I will get well. Amen? Uh, and then in verse 34, it says, you know, after, uh, well, let's go back to this for a second. So she just had that thought. She just said to herself, if I can just touch the hem. See, she had heard about Jesus, and she had personal knowledge, I guess, some sort, through her friends or maybe rumors that she had heard or stories about this man who was healing people just by touching them. And um, in some instances, he did a little bit more like the men who were blind. Uh, one man, he spit on his eyes. That's in the book of Mark, uh, chapter 8. Another man, he took and uh, spit upon the ground and made a, a mud pack, put on the eyes, had the man wash his eyes out in the pool uh, of Siloam. And he got healed. And then, of course, in, in Matthew, uh, Matthew 9, there's another story about two more men who were blind. And in this particular case, he didn't spit on them or anything like that. He just touched their eyes, and they were healed. But in each one of these situations, and then uh, well, those situations, and then the man who had the sick daughter, um, I believe he was a, a Jewish uh, synagogue official, um, he knew that all he had to do was just get to Jesus and say, Hey, would you, would you heal? And in each one of those cases, Jesus wanted to know two things. First of all, do you believe that he could do these things? And second of all, he told them it was your faith. Your faith is what has done this. It's your faith is the evidence of things hoped for. I mean, I'm sorry. Ah, boy, I'm all twisted up here. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, that's faith. Now, so this woman, I want to get back to her for a minute. This woman knew in her mind and said in her mind, if I could just touch the hem of the garment, she didn't want, she didn't have to personally, she wasn't desiring or seeking just to touch his toe or his leg or his hand. No, 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 no. She said, if I can just touch the hem, the hem of his garment, the bottom part of the garment, that's all she, she knew that if she could just do that, she knew in her heart that she was going to be healed. And when that did happen, when she did touch him, what did Jesus say? Who touched me? Because the power has gone out of me. He felt virtue leave his body, okay? And he knew that that healing power that he, that he carried whoosh, sucked up out of him. And it went down into this lady and healed her. And the woman was a little bit terrified. Is who touched me? And of course, and she admitted, she said, you know, she's a little terrified. Lord, it was me. And Jesus looked down at her so gently and said, woman your faith has made you whole man jesus was so incredible man you know this woman comes to comes to jesus and he just he feels the virtue come out of him he knew somebody had touched him 
and he just looked at the woman in the most gentle, kindest way, even though it doesn't state that, but we know he did. Um, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Your faith. Amen? The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6, without faith it's impossible to please God. One of the questions that I, I find really, really interesting is found in, in the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 6. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a mustard seed, you would say to this mountain, be uprooted and be cast into the, and be planted into the sea, and it would obey you. Now, let's go down to verse, let's go down to verse, um, let's go to verse 8 of chap of Luke 18. And Jesus says, and I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? And this is a good question. What about today? Does Jesus find this type of faith that this woman had upon the earth today? Does he find the faith that these blind men had? Uh, the people who are, were deaf back in those days. The, the ones who couldn't speak. Um, we talked about Jairus' daughter. Uh, the synagogue leader. Do we find that kind of faith? Do we have that type of faith? See, the interesting thing about faith, it is the size of a mustard seed. I don't know if you've ever seen a mustard seed or not, but bro, I have. You know, I used to have a garden. Man, the mustard seeds are tiny, bro. I mean, they're tiny. And, but from that little tiny seed, <coughs> a mustard plant grows. <coughs> In fact, Jesus gives a good description. He says it grows into it so large into a tree, tree type uh, plant that the birds can land in there. The birds can stay there. The birds can hop on one of the branches. Hey, I'm here, you know, and, and just enjoy itself. Amen. So that's the type of faith that Jesus is talking about here. And so we need to need to look at this a little bit deeper in our lives and, and ask the Lord, do I have that kind of faith, Lord? Is the faith that these people exhibited, the faith that these people use is my faith that large is it that strong um in i believe it's galatians chapter 2 uh, i have been crucified with christ nevertheless i live but yet not i but the life that i now live i live by the faith of the son of god or live by faith in the son of god regardless it's your faith it's all about your faith jesus you know couldn't ex couldn't stress us enough it's about faith it's about trusting God and believing that something will happen. And then so as I began to pray about this woman's story, these are the four things that God pointed out to me about this woman. He said, when this woman went to Jesus, one, she went to Jesus out of a need. Okay? How many times have we done that? Or do we go to Jesus in our time of need? Number two, she went to Jesus out of knowledge. She had heard, possibly even knew or, or, or had seen, Jesus heal. So she had knowledge of what he was able to do, of what he was capable of doing, and who he was. Number three, she went to Jesus. Not only did she have a need, she went to Jesus out of desperation. <clears throat> she had spent all this money. She had seen all these doctors. Nobody could help her. She was desperate. She really wanted to be healed. So she went to Jesus out of desperation. Are you that desperate? Is there something in your life that you're that desperate? You know, if you are, go to Jesus, man. I'm telling you, he's there. Uh, Psalm 68, um, I believe it's Psalm 68, uh, I think it's 68, 19. Yeah, praise be to the Lord our God, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. And in 1 Peter chapter 5, cast your care upon the Lord, for he cares for you. And then when you go to Psalm 55, verse 22, he says, cast your burden upon the Lord and he will, what? He will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. So we can depend upon God. We can, we can trust him. So she went out of desperation, desperation because she knew that she knew that she knew that he could help her. And then finally, the fourth thing that, he, that God pointed out to me is that when she went, what did she say in, in her mind? She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, such and such will happen. See, she went with an expectation. So when you go to God in prayer, regardless of what the situation is, regardless of what the burden is, regardless of, of, of what you're asking God for, go to God knowing that God can and will help you out. Maybe not in a way that you want, but you can go to him expecting him to help us out 
to help you out, to help me out in our time of need. That's the way God works. That's what God loves for us to do, is to take it to him. I believe it's in Isaiah that God says, bring your case here. Let's argue this out. Let's let's figure out what's going on. So, you know, man, we got we got nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing to be ashamed of. We have nothing to be afraid of. God is the most gentlest, kindest, most loving father that you could ever, ever, ever want. Maybe you had a great dad and a great granddad, and that's fantastic. I had a good, good father, okay? Uh, but I have one even better, and that's my heavenly father. The one who introduced me to the Lord Jesus Christ, Bob Hall, back in 1979. See, Bob had presented Jesus Christ to me in a way that I had never heard in my life. Now, growing up, I, you know, I used to go to church every single Sunday with, with my grandma, okay? My grandma, my, my, my paternal grandmother, man, I just loved this woman to death. I mean, she was the most fantastic lady, so gentle, so kind. And I saw miracles occur in her hand. I remember one day um, that she was home and, and one of her children came up to her and they said, Ma, and she looked at him, she said, yes. You know, I'm I'm in, I, I I need some money. I could, if you got twenty dollars, I can borrow. And Grandma, man, Grandma, what a woman of God! I'm telling you, she went to the cupboard where she carried her purse in the kitchen, and she opened up. And this was the last drop of money that my Grandma had. I'm serious. Her and Grandpa had that just that lousy little twenty dollars. I shouldn't say lousy. That fantastic twenty dollars. Okay, no hesitation. No ass, and she didn't say, oh, I don't know if this is going to happen. I don't know. Uh, are you going to pay me back? Or am I, it's gonna, you know, I don't know if I'm going to have enough for tomorrow. Should I give it all to you? No, 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 no. She didn't do any of that. Okay? She just gave it to him. No questions asked. And you know what? I'm not exaggerating. The very next day, Grandma had another $20 in her purse. I kid you not. I saw it with my eyes. Yesterday, I had a need, and I went... Uh, to a brother, and, and I told him, I said, man, I hate doing this, but, but I have a need. And you know what? This brother didn't question it. He didn't challenge it, nothing. He just helped me out. He was right there. I mean, it was incredible. And so when I think about God and the things that he does, God wants to help us out. He really does. He wants us to trust him. He wants us to, to be blessed. But at the same time, he wants us to be obedient he wants us to obey him. He wants us to follow him um, and give our lives to him and to give our hearts, our minds, give everything to him and just simply follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, he's he's the greatest, greatest man that ever lived. Anyways, so getting back to my story about Bob Hall, uh, Bob was the one who introduced me to Jesus Christ in 1979. When he talked, <laughs> I was in jail at the time, okay? And... I was laying on my bunk when this this guy come through um, and we started talking about, you know, hey, you know, I want you to meet my best friend. I want you to meet my best friend. I want to talk to you about him. And I'm thinking, what is this guy talking about? So I get up and, you know, I was actually forced out of bed. <laughs> the Holy Spirit wasn't going to let me lay on this one. So I got up and I listened to this man, okay? And uh, and, and I'm waiting for a release and so on and so forth from, from the jail. But I listened to this guy. And the way that he presented his friend... He talked about his friend, even though he wasn't there with him physically, he talked about him so real. I'm telling you, man, those of us who were in that cell, we literally looked and expected somebody to walk through the door to stand there next to Bob and to talk to us. But the guy never came, this individual. However, at the end, Bob said, by the way, the name of my friend is Jesus. And I'm telling you what, this floored me. Because I said, I've been to church every Sunday with my grandma. I was in youth choir. I was in youth groups. I was Bible study. Uh, we used to have a thing called LTL, which is, uh, I don't know, something about tolerance or whatever it was. Um, loyal, loyal loyal, Tolerance Legion, or I forgot what it was. It's nothing but, but this woman by Miss Katie. She was fantastic, man. We loved her. Um, and, and every week she would give us goat's milk and cookies. I'm serious, man. It was really great. But anyways, so we, she taught us also about Jesus being a friend. And so, you know, between her and the other ones, but I, it never dawned on me. And when I'm in church all back in those years, they never talked about Jesus as a friend. They talked about Jesus as a Savior, as the Lord. Somebody who was hang, hung on the cross, who, who, who shed uh, his blood um, and was resurrected, you know, three days later. 
but they never emphasized about the life of Jesus, about him being a friend to us. And so when Bob presented this to us, I'm looking at these guys and, and with, who are there with me, and they're looking at me and thinking, wow, nobody, even they admitted, nobody had ever presented to us a man named Jesus as being a personal friend who really does care about us. What does he say in Matthew 11? Okay, Matthew 11 is, is, is I think, is, is a fantastic, I mean, literally fantastic. Let's turn to that real quick. Because I, I just love this Matthew, this part of Matthew 11. And this gives us a good glimpse of Jesus and, and, and what he's like. Let's go down to verse. All right. Verse 12. Let's go down to verse 28. Jesus says, come to me. All, not just some, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What's he say back there in the psalm? Cast all your care upon him. Then he says in verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Then in verse 30, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know the one thing that I've noticed about God? God never, ever, ever places anything upon us that we can't handle. He's not going to put anything upon us that he wouldn't that 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 he hasn't already experienced himself when he was upon this earth and in, in, in the life of Jesus. Never, God would never overburden us. He doesn't do that. If God, it, it's like this. Let me try to put it this way. It's like uh, we're going through a situation. All of a sudden, we find ourselves inside this furnace. Okay, and and the heat. I mean, the heat's building. It's building. It's building. And we looked outside and we see God out there. Okay. But here's the here's the here's the beauty. God is in control of that furnace. God knows exactly how much heat we can handle because his hand and his eye is up on the thermostat and the heat regulator. And God knows, okay, this is enough, and he'll turn it down, and bam, away we go. But we're a better individual because of it. And God has burned that up out of us. Whatever whatever burden it is, God has gotten rid of it. So remember, God is hands always up. On you he will never ever 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 leave you nor forsake you I'm telling you that is a promise that I live by every day every day I know that the Lord is with me when I wake up in the morning I know that the Lord was with me all night because he never slumbers he never sleeps he's constantly constantly with me and I'm gonna ask you if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior even though this is a video, I'm going to give you the I've asked you to take the opportunity, this opportunity to invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and your Savior. Um, Jesus says, you know, if you call upon Him, He will listen, He will answer. And then when we get over to, let's go over to. I want to. I, I I like to back things up with Scripture so the people know what I'm talking about because you could go there yourselves and look these scriptures up. Uh, <clears throat> let me see. We are in. Romans 10. Okay, let's begin at verse 8, Romans 10. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. Who's the word? The word is the Lord Jesus Christ. Go to John 1, you'll find out. Okay? That is the word of faith, which we are preaching. That if, now check this out, if you confess, say as, speak as, with your mouth, and of course, if you you know if if uh, if if you're uh, hearing impaired, you know instead of your mouth you have your hands. Amen. Um, some may who um, what they call uh, deaf mutes and so on and so forth. They can use their hands to communicate. So if you confess with your mouth or with your hands, Jesus as Lord. Now here's the key right here, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved for with the heart a person believes resulting in righteousness and with the mouth he confesses resulting in salvation for the scripture says whoever believes in him will not be disappointed praise god i am not disappointed there are some days that life gets really really tough and ugly okay but i'm not disappointed i really am not there's times that I struggle with God. There's times that I will wrestle with God. I'm, I'm, I'm like Jacob, man. I'd be wrestling with God at nighttime sometimes. I'm serious, man. And 
But God is faithful, man. He just doesn't give up on me. He just doesn't. I don't know why he, I don't know why he hangs out with me the way he does, but he sure does. And how thankful that I am to the Lord Jesus Christ that he's there constantly for me, that he fulfills that promise every single day of my of my life. I will never leave you nor forsake you. God has us written in the palm of his hand. That's in the Bible. All of your tears are being collected in a bottle. That's in the Bible. So don't tell me that God doesn't exist and don't tell me that God doesn't care. I'm telling you from my experience, God cares because I have recently been through a lot of stuff and God has shown me over and over and over and over each and every single day that he really does care. He cares about me. He cares about you. He cares about your life and where you're going to spend eternity. My brother Russell oh, lives down across the um, Bay Bridge. Oh my God, I love this man. He tells the people every day in his little meditation that he does on Facebook, and tells them that, hey, hell is real. And and, and Russell Russell's 100% right in that. Hell is genuine. It's real. Don't think it's not. I'm telling you, man, hell is real. Okay? I had a glimpse many, many years ago of something um, that God had shown me about hell. And uh, it, 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 it frightened me. It really did. And it made me realize how much more thankful I am to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, my life hasn't been perfect. No, 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 no. Neither has yours or anybody else upon this earth. Only one life was perfect, and that was Jesus Christ. Um, but the day's coming when every tongue's going to confess him as Lord. Every eye's going to see him, and they're going to fall at his knees. I don't care whether you're the president. I don't care whether you're a king, a queen, a dictator. doesn't make any difference. Whether you're Hollywood's greatest star, you could be uh, Whitney Houston, you could be Michael Jackson, you could be Barack Obama, you could be... President Clinton, President Reagan, could be Queen Elizabeth or King Charles or King David, no matter who it is. I don't care. It could, could be your neighbor. It could be the person who lives in a tent uh, down the street who's homeless. Um, it could be someone who has uh, a disability and can't move and can't get around, paralyzed and maybe in a hospital. I don't care who it is. The day is coming because remember this, the ground where the cross is at is all level. The day's coming when every one of them, your title, your position, your physical situation, your mental your mental situation, it doesn't make it make any difference to God. We're all the same in front of him. When these leaders go before God, God's not going to say to them, hey, President Obama or President Clinton or President Biden. He's not going to call them president. He's not going to call Elizabeth Queen. And by the way, she is saved, praise God, and she's with the Lord. Amen. But she's not called queen up there. No, 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 no. She's called the daughter of the living God. We are sons of the living God. And at that cross, it's all level ground. And every, every single, my, me, you, everybody is going to bow at that name. We are going to bow at the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to confess with our mouths, Jesus is Lord. And check this out. Satan himself is going to confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Whether he likes it or not, it's going to happen. And he knows it. Amen? Because Jesus Christ is Lord. There is only one Lord. So if you have not received him, I ask you, you know, take a moment right now and just go to Jesus and say, Lord, I need a Savior. I need a friend. I need a Lord. I need you to be the Lord of my life. Would you come into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior? and to help me through this time and I give myself to you and when you do that I'm telling you man your sins are forgiven automatically uh, and the Bible talks about that Jesus was our propitiation in other words see God has a very high high standard of righteousness trust me none of us could ever on our own merit we could never ever come near the meeting the standards of God's for righteousness except by one man Jesus Christ and then God made it possible for each of us to stand before him in Jesus Christ. And so when Jesus looks at Dale, he sees Jesus in me, the hope of glory. And therefore he knows Dale has met my propitiation. I've met the standards of God for righteousness. And I am God's son. I am his child. Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. The Holy Spirit lives in me. Greater is he who is in me than he is of the world. So... This is Pastor Dale. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, please, 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 please do. 
you know, if, if you need to contact me, you can contact me through email. It's freedom92909 at outlook.com. I would love to hear from you. I really would. And to know your situation. And if I can pray for you, let me know. Because I, I, I love to pray. I really do. Uh, I don't do enough of it, but I do enjoy praying. I like to pray on behalf of other people. So uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to do that right now. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, for allowing me this opportunity, Father, to share uh, some thoughts that you have given to me. Uh, dealing this be, began with the we were talking about the woman with the issue of blood father she went to you in faith father god she trusted you she knew that if she could just touch the hem of of your garment sir that she'd be healed and you you did that for her jesus you did that for this wonderful wonderful woman father and god we come to you with the same thing father we come to you with saying that you know maybe we can't touch his feet but all we need to do is just touch the hem of his garment and then Jesus say, Woo! The powers come out of me. Who touched me? And Lord, we can look to you and say it was us. And then Jesus will say, Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has helped you. Your faith has given you the answer to his prayers. And so on and so forth. So Lord, we thank you. I don't know who's watching this or who's not, Father, but I pray that if anybody does watch us and does not know Jesus as Lord, that Father, that you will hear their prayer when they cry out to you and ask Jesus into their hearts. That God, that you would respond quickly and bless their lives abundantly. In the name of Jesus, amen. This is Pastor Dale. God bless you. I love you all. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week and a wonderful life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God loves you and so do I. Hallelujah. Amen. Bye.